now class 10 we are going to revise the poem animals okay all the points we are taking into consideration today and first of all we are going to revise the poem animals so what this poem is all about animals so animals in animals the poem animals the poet has compared animals and human beings the poet is comparing the characteristics of both the animals as well as that of human beings. The poet is saying that human beings, they are, you can say they are themselves responsible for their suffering. So this means this poem, it explains about human suffering. Then materialism in human life or materialistic nature. in human life or materialism in human life dominance of materialism that human beings their lives are dominated by materialism and they they have so many prejudices based upon religion and individualism they believe in the supremacy of each one of them they believe that each one of them is superior than the others so this is the reason why they are they have fallen prey to this individualism okay and ultimately human beings they are full of desires that ultimately the poet is bringing about futility of human desires that human beings they make wanton desires ultimately they are useless and Poet is of course making us or bringing out the reason means what is the root cause of their suffering. The root cause of their suffering also. So poem animals, those it seems to be quite simple, but it includes the various important facts of human beings. So what the poet has brought about, let us see this you can say the explanation of the poem. The first one is I think I could turn and live with animals. They are so pleasant and self-constrained. So I'm going to just, you can say, summarize the poem in the form of main points that will be much helpful to you. So the very first line, what the poet is, you can say, highlighting or the poet is highlighting or, or human desire or sorry, it is poet's desire. First is poet's desire to live with animals. So this is the first main thing that the poet desires. Now the poet has started this point to put a stress upon this point that he desires to live with animals. Why? Because they are so calm and self-contained. Because they are calm and self-satisfied as they are quite calm and self-satisfied. So this is the reason the poet wishes to live with that of animals. Now the next line, I stand and look at them long and long. Okay, because the poet has observed these animals for such a long time. So now in this line, see line one, I think. Okay, then afterwards I, stand. So the line, these lines, they are starting with the same word I and I. So this is repetition here of this word. So these are examples of anaphora. So what are these? These are examples of anaphora. Fine. And long and long, long and long. This is again repeated here. So first of all, this is an example of alliteration. Because this word is repeated again and again. So this is again an example of repetition. This is again an example of repetition. Because the poet said, I stand long and long. I have observed them for such a long time. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. Next, the poet, he has discussed about qualities of animals. Why he thought them to be better than why he thought that animals are better than 
human beings, the first thing is they never complain. That is, they never complain. This is the important thing that they never complain. They never whine and complain about their conditions. They never complain about their conditions. Whatever conditions they are living in, they are, they are quite satisfied with these conditions. And they do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. Means they, they are free from any kind of from any kind, from any kind of, you can say, burden. Okay, that they never lie awake in dark and they weep for their sins. They are away from this. They never weep for their sins because they have never committed these kind of sins. Their life is quite simple as that. Okay, as whatever they are doing, it is for reality. They never complain. They never weep, lie awake in dark and they weep for their sins and they do not make me sick discussing their duty to God means they are never discussing that they have to oblige God and they are just living their life freely okay making me again repetition of this consonant sound so this is again an example of alliteration they are used and not one is dissatisfied, not one is demented with the mania of owning things. No one is dissatisfied. It means they are not dissatisfied. They are not or they are never dissatisfied. And no one is demented. Means demented means that they are mentally sick. Demented means mentally sick. That they are never mentally sick with mania of owning things. Mania means they are never mad, mad after things. They are never mad after things. So if they are not mad after things, then what it means? That they are free from, it means that animals, they are free from longings and desires. So what is there that they are free from any kind of longings as well as desires. They are not making any kind of longings, desires. So these are the qualities of animals that they never complain. They are free from any kind of burden. They never lie awake in the dark and to weep for their sins. And then they means they are never discussing their duty towards God. So they are never dissatisfied and they are also not mentally sick, that they are mad after owning things. So I hope that these two main points are clear. And no one means to one another, nor to its kind, that lived thousands of years ago. Okay, so no one means to one another, means they never believe in subordination. They never pay respect to one another like human beings. They bow in front of each other to pay respect. No. For them, in their world, everyone is equal. There is not any kind of subordination in their world. So it is just because of this reason that they, are, they never suffer from individualism, which I have talked about in the starting. Okay? So they are, no, they are free from this kind of individualism. And that lived thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. So this example, this thousands of years ago. What is this? This is an example of hyperbole. Okay, where there is exaggeration of a thing. So how can one come to know about the persons who are living thousands of years ago? In order to show that this happens, the poet has exaggerated the number of years ago, thousands of years ago. So how can one come to know what the people thousand of years ago were doing? So this is the reason why this is an example of hyperbole. Next, not one is respectable or happy over the whole earth. Okay. So not one is respectable or unhappy over the world means no, not all. It is not like that. Any animal is happy or the another one is unhappy. There is similarity of, you can say, moods. And over the whole earth means this is applicable for all the animals of this entire earth. 
so they show their relations to me and i accept them so now the next main point is poets wish to accept animals so the next important thing is poets wish to accept animals so the next main part of this point that the poet wishes is that he wish to accept animals as a part of their world because not one is respectable or unhappy so for this reason what the poet is saying so they show their relations to me and i accept them now the poet is saying i whole heartedly accept the animal world because they are no one is superior no one is inferior all are at the same level or enjoying the same kind of life they are quite clear in their relationships also they bring me tokens of myself now what is the important thing means bring me tokens of myself so what is the meaning of this tokens of myself so it shows or it reminds him of his own belonging of his own belonging own belonging means that many years ago the poet was saying that many years ago their ancestors they have you can say they have emerged or they possessed these kind of qualities this is the reason why tokens of myself means once human beings they have these kind of qualities that they enjoy earlier but now at present time what is happening they are not at all enjoying these qualities so it is just because of this reason what happened that it reminds him of his own you can say originality which was once a part of human beings so and i accept them and they events means they show plainly in this they events them plainly in their possession means one these token these qualities which are possessed by animals these were once the qualities of human beings but now what happened that human beings they have forgotten these qualities and they have moved away they have moved astray they have moved away from the originality that they possess i wonder where they get these tokens now the poet is saying i wonder i wonder where so again this is repetition of the same sound so this is again an example of alliteration now the poet is saying i wonder where means poet is saying i wonder from where they have got these values these you can say realities of life on which their relations or on which their life is based but i but did i pass that be huge times ago and neglect and negligently drop them the poet is saying does this happen or did this happen that human beings they possess these qualities long time back but now what has happened now they have dropped them negligently they have dropped them they have forgotten these qualities so this is how the poet is bringing up you can say compare bringing about a comparison between animals as well as that of human beings but when he is giving all these qualities to animals okay it means he is pers using personification okay and that is he is giving human like qualities like they never condemn they never betray they are true to their relations okay they never they are never mad after you can say worldly desires they are free from any kind of longing and desires so what is this all this all is example of personification that human like qualities they are given to animals fine so this is the reason why he has personified animals so if i talk about you some you can see questions about that so what does poet mean when he is saying not one is you can say respectable or unhappy over whole earth means human beings they are not at all happy it means that there is lack of social you can say conventions and which is of course making them unhappy they have not made any kind of social conventions and because of this they are quite unhappy now what virtues should be possessed by humans what virtues according to this point what qualities they should be possessed by human beings 
they should be kind they should be innocent they should be honest enough in their relations so these virtues should be possessed by human being because all these qualities they are present in animals and it is this human beings they possess these qualities long time back but now what has happened they have brought them negligently so it is not you can say it is not the complaining attitude of human being but it is accepting the situation is important and accepting the situation is key to happiness this is what the poet wants to deliver to us that is accepting the situation is very important in life okay so sometimes a person can be there for example this main theme can be given it is not complaining but accepting the situation okay which is the key for happiness in life you have to elaborate this statement fine so in this manner question can be asked there you have to explain the complete reason why the poet wants to be with animals what are the qualities when which animals possess and finally what we thought of these qualities that once it was a part of human life but what happened that they have dropped them okay and if we talk about the message of this point okay so what is the message the poet is giving us the message that human beings they have dropped their you can say goodness they have changed their you can say good qualities and this is the reason why they are sufferers they are dissatisfied they are far far away from simplicity and it is because of this reason that they are always suffering and this is what this poem animals is all about now if you have any doubts you can raise up your hands i'm just waiting for one minute but i am really very dissatisfied as well as disappointed upon looking at your tests which i have checked especially for daksh and all sajal even means you people are not getting marks i don't know why if you are preparing in this manner if for exams i don't think so that you will get good marks even madhav you also need to improve a lot so now for agarwal also the answer was not clear for the proposal okay yet till you people were not aware about what is the far so to in tomorrow's class i am going to discuss about that question and the next point that i am going to discuss is amanda though the poem is quite simple but you may be short of words to explain for tale of rusty dragon i don't think so any problem is there so now i am going to discuss the poem amanda so now the poem amanda which is quite simple but you should know about the main things main poetic devices used in the poem yes next we are going to revise the poem amanda so what the poet wants to bring out here okay so the poet is bringing about the world of teenagers that is the teenagers they are always you can say being nagged by their parents okay so parents they try to what they are trying they are trying to use every possible means so that they should you can say bring some positive changes in their children or they always you can say wish that their children should imbibe positive qualities positive you can say they are using positive measures okay but they are not at all acceptable to children okay but ultimately what have will happen if you will nag them again and again what will happen that they will stop listening to them so here through this you can say a young girl whose name was amanda okay so amanda is a young girl she was nagged again and again by her mother so she got irritated and she is never listening to her mother and this is what the poet wants to explain so let us see the first stanza explanation is quite simple 
but here there is you can say the reality as well as the imaginary world or imaginary world of that of this girl amanda which is of course put in brackets and the poet is also robin clean the name of the poet is robin clean he is of course giving a reference to that of various you can say famous characters okay like that of rapunzel mermaid so when he is giving reference to these this is which poetic device used here is allusion then he is referring to famous characters okay so this is which poetic device used here this is called as allusion so how, how the poem starts don't bite your nails amanda don't punch punch means bend okay so sometimes this is often asked what is the meaning of punch means bend don't bend your shoulders amanda amanda stop that slouching okay slouching what is the meaning of slouching slouching means sitting in a lazy manner sitting in sitting in a lazy manner so mother is trying to bring these kind of positive changes in amanda as she feels that she is bending her shoulders on and off again and she is always sitting in a relaxing or in a very lazy manner that will definitely affect her posture so this is the reason why the mother is telling her not to do these things so but what happens so now here again and again there is repetition of amanda so this is what this is an example of repetition so what is this this is an example of repetition used here then now see the next words or next lines they are put in brackets parentheses why there is a languid emerald green sea emerald means green now it means this is the imaginary world of this young girl amanda she is imagining herself that she is living in a sea like a mermaid which is quite green in color emerald means green in color where the sole inhabitant is the where there is nobody to nag her nobody to point out here she is the only one who is living there it means she felt disturbed when someone is telling her the same and same thing and a mermaid drifting blissfully mermaid drifting blissfully she is living like a mermaid and drifting blissfully means she is carrying she is being carried away in this you can say happy world okay so drifting blissfully this is of course and drifting blissfully this is creating an image of a mermaid lying freely on one stone of or one you can say small part of the sea and where she is enjoying so this is of course an example of imagery used here so what is this this is of course an example of imagery drifting blissfully now again it is uh, the sanjay shifting to that of mother did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your eye clean your shoes amanda again amanda and amanda is used again so this is of course a uh, example of repetition four over i thought and told in thought and told there is you can say repetition of this sound so this is alliteration okay moreover there is predominance of word o okay used here so this is example told you to your shoes predominance of sound o okay so this is an example of assonance told to and it is uh, clean your shoes clean your shoes here this is predominance of this this is not at the starting but in between the words so this is example of assonance used here okay so this is the example of assonance used here so now next how she is imagining herself i am an orphan at least she was not an orphan roaming the street i am moving in the streets i pattern soft dust with my hot bare feet means she made beautiful patterns with her bare feet without any shoes she was moving 
the silence is golden okay silence is golden means silence is like you can say uh, here he has made, made make a made a comparison okay that silence is always better than anything it means that she hates that kind of you can say behavior and freedom is sweet okay so what she wanted she wanted freedom for herself okay she said that there must be adaptation of silence that she knew that she is always long now again her mother is telling her don't eat that chocolate amanda remember your acne amanda will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you so here again you see will you please look do and look predominance of verb o and please me and when there is predominance of e so this is example of tense so the mother is again telling her not to eat chocolate because chocolate will tell you it will cause you can say acne to her and in the next tense she is imagining herself as a panther so this is again what this is uh, reference to some special character so this is what this is an example of allusion used here i have not a fear live life in a tower is tranquil and bare she is imagining herself a panther who is living in a high tower where there is nobody to disturb her she is living alone she is enjoying her life and i'll certainly never let out my bright here means bright here means she will never invite any kind of trouble for her stop that sulking at once amanda you are always so moody amanda and no good thing i nag at you that i harass you but ultimately it is just because of the better man the mother is saying that she is telling to amanda not to do these things so this is what this poem amanda is all about and uh, yesterday the people said ma'am the tale of custard dragon is quite clear to us but you always remember the tale of custard dragon what it is based upon the tale of custard dragon is supposed to be based upon you can say the importance of the point that appearances are deceptive in nature one should not judge a book by its cover as in this poem the small animal a dragon who was thought to be hot he was always thought that he is the only one who is sitting in a corner he is always finding a nice safe place a safe place for himself in order to stay but ultimately he was the only that dragon who has saved brinda from the attack of the pirates okay so this animal was always considered as that say Uh, you can see he was always considered as to be thought by him, but ultimately he was only this animal who has saved him. And this is all about all the things. Now, if you have any doubts, you can look up in the hands.